The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Any questions or concerns about what is said should be directed to the show host, whose information will be provided upon request. My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday 7 My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday 7 p.m., gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m., gotta let them know. 3M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show. Introduce the host. My brothers keep a show. Introduce the host. That's the Dr. Michael Green. Hello and welcome back to another Breakfast Mojo. I'm your host, Comedian Koi, and we're about to eat some breakfast. So come on, follow me. It's already set up. This is what I heard. So I have no idea what's expected. All I know is it's breakfast food. So let's see what it is. I have no idea what it is, folks. No idea. No idea. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at this. Legends. Okay. They got the thing all set up here. It's chicken and grill. So we're gonna see what the chicken is right now on the Breakfast Mojo. What do we have here? Chicken. <laughs> and what else do we have here? Okay, waffles, okay, okay. So the chicken kind of threw me off because I'm like, it's breakfast, hello, this is a Breakfast Mojo. Chicken and waffles, got my syrup here. Should have been blindfolded when I was doing this breakfast, I should. But let's see what it's like here. Wow, looks good. It, it cuts easily. Got a little white powder on it. Some butter. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, let's see what it's what it's looking like. At least you could have had the fork and the knife match each other. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Let's see what it's like here. Here we go. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Let's see what the chicken is like here. Got. You know, some of y'all are saying, why don't you just pick it up and eat the thing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, here we go. So we got the... Very basic. Nothing... Nothing fantastic. I wonder if I can do two reviews. One for the chicken and one for the waffle. I actually like the waffle. I think the waffle is very good. The waffle is very... The batter is very, what do you say, a little bit on the sugar sugar side. The chicken, on the other hand, could be a lot better. I'm not really happy with the chicken as much. I don't think the, the chicken actually makes the waffle any better. I think the waffle actually complements the chicken. You know what I'm saying? So, for my review, I will say breakfast brilliant for the waffle and breakfast blah for the chicken. Probably do it separately. Oh, that's all the review that we have. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look, what is your favorite waffle place? Do you have a chicken and waffle spot that you normally go to that you can recommend? If you do, write it in the comment. Let folks know. Okay? Don't forget to subscribe. Breakfast Mojo. Take care. Mic's open. Is that what that meant? Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, good evening, good evening, everyone. Great evening, great evening, great evening, great evening. Welcome to My Brother's Keeper, where greater men continue to make men great with a spirit of excellence. Definitely good to see you on this terrific Tuesday because it is great with Tony the Tiger. <laughs> you thought I missed that, didn't you? It's Tony the Tiger. It's Terrific Tuesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining in tonight. Hey, it's definitely a blessing. We got a, a stellar uh, lineup for you on this evening, and uh, we're so happy that you can tune in uh, to us tonight. And uh, remember, if you want to um, watch us on Roku, Apple TV, uh, download Fire Stick, and um, pull up WBGR, definitely you can. And you can take any one of those avenues to uh, check us out because definitely we are ready to go. So some housekeeping rules, let's get them in order now. And um, would just like to welcome um, our Dallas-Fort Worth um, area. 
uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Texas, Raleigh, Durham, uh, Winston, Salem, North Carolina, as well as New Jersey, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia, also South Carolina. Um, we want to go all the way on the West Coast to Pomona, California, as well as Ontario, California, under the leadership, uh, well, the Imani Christian Cathedral, under the leadership of Bishop Jelani Kefela. Uh, thank you so much for your support on the West Coast. Also, here on the East Coast, the 7th uh, district, our Bishop uh, James B. Walker of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Again, he is the, the presiding prelate. Thank you again for your support. Uh, the call in number tonight again is 301 429 4297. 301 429 WBGR. And again, like to welcome, welcome, welcome you to this show. And again, uh, before we kick things off, uh, we always do our Black History Fact by none other than my co-host, Dr. Brian Champion. All right. Good evening. How Here's are you today? Brian. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was a little early. Uh, <laughs> how you doing today? I'm great. Good, good, good. Outstanding. Everybody doing well. It's always good to be back here for another episode of My Brother's Keeper. Yes, sir. You notice I've been here uh, about five straight weeks now. I so it was I'm three. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> see, Absolutely that's good. fine. That's why we got teachers in here today, you know, to help us with our mathematics. So okay. It's been five weeks and not three. Okay. But that's all right. But, uh, Only if they're counting. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, today's a terrific Tuesday. Yes, We're still in the yes, month of, of October mm -hmm. in which we are uh, recognizing several big uh, things. Last week we went through a whole list noticing that there was 105 different uh, celebrations going on mm -hmm. during the month of October. But we did highlight a few and we still want to lift up and recognize uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes. Uh, also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Emotional Intelligence Awareness Month mm -hmm. and Ministers Appreciation Awareness Month. So I just want to say to you, Reverend Dr. Michael Green, I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. I and I know that. I'm not the only one, and I know the folk over at St. Matthew are always excited to uh, celebrate their pastor and, and show you their love. Yes, absolutely. All right, all right, all right. I, I love the. The, 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 the congregation over at St. Matthew. Got love, got love. Got All right. <laughs> yes, sir. So I actually put on my purple today, this distinguished color <clears throat> in recogni recognition of uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Also, I've kind of dabbed it with a little bit of pink in there to kind of you know, blend it all coordinate. together. That's right, coordinate. coordinate. You know, instead of the mushrooms, I got <laughs> I got a little pink, you know, here. Even, <laughs> even down to the socks, got a little pink and purple socks today. So uh, we, we coordinate, like you say. So, but just happy to if, be here. If, ladies and, if the ladies and gentlemen out in the listening audience can really capture the essence, it, this you're not doing, them, doing this any justice. Can you show them those socks, man? These I socks. will move out of the way. These Brother, can all you right. show the people the socks, man? Those All right. Yeah, shoes. let me make sure. Here we go. Hey. All right. Yeah. And purple shoes. Purple shoes. Oh, that's what you want to see. Could, no, you he could to see the purple suede shoes. I tell you, that's right. So we uh, just want to recognize. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's coordinated. <laughs> From his necktie to his socks, he's that's coordinated. Right. Uh-huh. That's good. From head to toe. That, mm -hmm. That's a good thing. All right. So uh, as we move on into, because we got a whole lot to talk about today, yes. I did want to take a moment to recognize someone special today yes. uh, in our African American uh, moment mm -hmm. of recognition. And uh, you know, as we were on the air last uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday, when I got home, I saw this message that uh, Kane Hope Felder had mm -hmm. passed away at the age of 76. And so I wanted to just kind of, you know, take a moment to highlight this scholar, this African-American scholar okay. who began to do some really interesting things mm -hmm. in the way we see the Bible and the African-American or the presence of people mm -hmm. in, with color, mm -hmm. of color in the Bible. But just to say a little bit about him, he was born in Aiken, South Carolina, but moved to Boston, uh, Massachusetts, where he graduated from a prep school there. Mm -hmm. He left there and he went, man, you know, he went to be highly educated and okay. he attended Howard University uh, where he got a bachelor's of arts degree okay. in philosophy, mm -hmm. Greek and Latin. Mm. So he was preparing himself for to deal with those biblical languages yes, at an early age. Absolutely. Uh, went on to uh, Oxford English, uh, Oxford. 
Oxford, England, mm -hmm. where he uh, went to uh, Oxford University and got a diploma in theology. Uh, later did a Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary okay. in New York, and then a PhD and a Master's of Philosophy from Columbia University. Mm -hmm. He uh, early, you know, he was ordained initially uh, early in life as a United Methodist minister mm -hmm. and served as an elder in the United Methodist Church where he served as the director of mm -hmm. Black Methodist for Church Renewal okay. uh, from 1969 to 1972. He also pastored the Grace United Methodist Church in New York City. Leaving there, he taught at uh, Princeton Theological Seminary and then moved in 1981 to Howard University mm -hmm. where he stayed until he retired in uh, 2016. Okay. What he also, besides being a professor of New Testament, he's also was the editor of the Journal of Religious Thought, which often had was an African American opportunity to have uh, to deal with theological studies and to deal with theological issues in the African American community to give us a voice and an opportunity to uh, be published. Mm -hmm. He. Um, of his own, one of the things that he did, and I think this was one of his breakthrough books that was Troubling Biblical Waters, which he really began to take a look of the people of color and their presence in the uh, Bible. Mm -hmm. And so he began to take a strong look at this to say that, you know, uh, how Christianity in many ways has been deemed as a white religion mm -hmm. that there's African Americans all through the Bible yes. who made contributions to the faith that we now follow. He also wrote um, the, the uh, original African American Heritage Study Bible mm -hmm. and he also uh, mm -hmm. later in his career wrote True to Our Native Land. Another book that we're very familiar with where he was the editor and wrote the preface <clears throat> was uh, Stony the Rod, yes. Road We Trod, mm -hmm. which he also, uh, as you may remember, Bishop um, Thomas, Lanier. Thomas Lanier Hoyt, who was our bishop yes. uh, at a point, and also another New Testament scholar, wrote the first chapter mm -hmm. of that book. Mm -hmm. So we just want to kind of acknowledge yeah, him uh, today. Uh, he was survived by a wife, Dr. Jewel Felder, and, a, and they had one daughter. And mm -hmm. so we just want to recognize him for the contribution mm -hmm. that he has made to the African American community and to uh, religious studies. And we uh, mm -hmm. thank God for him, his presence. When I was at Howard, uh, he was on sabbatical the mm -hmm. semester I took New Testament. Okay. So I didn't have the chance to study under him. However, we did get a chance to know each other, and he was uh, the one who gave me the first opportunity to publish as I wrote an article in the Journal Good. of Religious uh, Thought back uh you know, while I was uh, a graduate student. So we just want to recognize him and say thank God for him. And uh, to Dr. Kainfelder, uh, rest in peace. Oh, yes. <clears throat> and absolutely rest in peace and, and congratulations on the, um, the work, the foundation. And uh, when I um, um, had an opportunity to uh, get the book, Stony the Road We Trod, um, and, and discovered that uh, Bishop Hoyt was uh, that uh, co-authored as well, uh, very profound, and it reaches back to our history and our heritage. Yeah, a lot of the Definitely. work that he did was just, uh, was groundbreaking. Yes. And its relevance to African American inclusion uh, yes. in, in American religion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Greatly right. appreciate it, man. Very good. Very good. Right. Hey, did he do well, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, if you would like to uh, sponsor um, our Black History Fact during that time, definitely you can support us by uh, sponsoring the Black History Fact. So definitely, and you can get more information. We'll give you that information in a thread, uh, reaching out to our content producer. Amen. Amen. Hey, guess what Monday is? Oh, man. It's coming Monday. That's right. It's a big day. It's a big day. It's a yeah. great day. It's Men Make a Difference it's Day. It's Men Make a Difference Day. <laughs> and, you know, I'm excited about that because, you know, when men come together, and, and, and it, it, it means to me that things are happening, things are shifting when men come together in unity. 
that's that's a powerful move. And um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm happy to really uh, present these gentlemen to you. Uh, Mr. Mosley, you may have rem um, remember him from a previous show. And again, uh, new to my brother's keeper is uh, Mr. Hood, who is also known as Coach Hood. So <laughs> definitely I'll be introducing them, but just give you some background. Monday is Men Making a Difference Day, which bring fathers into the classrooms to promote parental involvement in the public schools. Come on, let's clap that up. When men come together to make a difference. And um, schools across the country um, have scheduled fun and educational activities for the men, with officials hoping that the fathers, grandfathers, uncles, and other male role models would use the importance of being engaged in a child's education uh, and how such involvement could change a child's life. I'm, I'm very, very um, excited this evening because I believe that this show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe is going to be down like four flat tires, okay? <laughs> uh, because these are men <clears throat> tonight that are after even my own, my own heart because they, they love doing men work. Uh, working with other men and helping to develop the lives of other men. So the first gentleman I want to introduce to you is uh, uh, Coach E. Hood. Uh, he is a graduate of Eastern Senior High School, the pride of Capitol Hill. Uh, Eastern Ramblers, right? Absolutely. About that. <laughs> and uh, also uh, studied at American University and um, coach is a member of the First Baptist Church of Highland Park. Don't want to steal his thunder, but I want him to really uh, introduce himself to you because definitely um, he has an amazing uh, uh, bio that he can definitely give you of his own. So, uh, Brother Hood, Coach Hood, tell the people who you are. People who I am. <laughs> First and foremost, I'm a child of God. Amen. And without God, I would be nothing. I would have nothing. And I would be going nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I've been mentoring for 31 years. I started in church. Didn't know why, but uh, God so fit to put me in that position. I mentored for 31 years, and then in 2009, I was introduced to Prince George's County Public Schools. There was a need because they had lost a longtime coach someone who was beloved in the county. I knew nothing about PG County sports or schools, anything. And my sister said to me, I need your help. She said, this young man will not make it if you don't come. And I was like, that's a lot of pressure. Why me? <laughs> yeah. And she said, because I know what you do. Mm -hmm. And so I promised her that I would come. I came over to Suitland and I've been in Prince George's County schools ever since. All right. I went okay. from Mr. Hood, the mentor at Suitland, to Coach Hood. All right. I left there and went to Surrattsville down in Clinton, Maryland as Coach Hood and a mentor. Left there, went to Bladensburg, coached football to Sarasville and Bladensburg. The uh, Bladensburg basketball coaches announced the games on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And so one day after football season was over, I get this strange Facebook message and it says, Coach Hood, great season. Basketball's coming. And I'm like, <laughs> I read it three times. So uh -huh. after the third time, I was like, wait a minute, you offered me a job? Uh -huh. And he's like, well, you don't have to be interviewed. I know your work. So I told him, I said, well, let me talk to the boss, which is my wife. <laughs> and uh, if the boss says yes, then why not? And so she said yes, because you're there anyway. So I started coaching basketball, and I've had so many highlights. You know, one of them being that uh, Blazersburg's basketball team yes. went to the state championship in 2018. And we weren't victorious, but yet we were victorious. Mm -hmm. See, if you know anything about the Bladensburg area, there are neighborhoods within that, that city mm -hmm. that were beefing or not liking each other. And what those kids did was bring those communities together. Mm -hmm. Because in the stands, they were all together rooting for those kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't mm -hmm. about the, mm -hmm. the win and loss of the basketball game. Yes. They won in life. Yes. And that's what we try to teach yeah. them. You know, with everything that I do, mm -hmm. I'm trying to help young men get better. I don't care what their nationality is. If you're a young man, you're a young lady, I'm trying to help you because I think that's why God put me here. Amen. So I give them everything that I have Amen. to try Amen. to promote them and move them forward. So. That's Coach Hood. Amen. Amen. That's Coach Hood. That's Amen. Coach Hood. Hey, Pastor D uh, Daryl DeGlide Burton, Sister uh, Candace Dula, uh, Sister Wanda Briscoe, uh, Sister Leslie Cash Tibbs, Sister Tony Session. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Those are some of the ones that I can see at this point. But definitely, uh, please like and share. Like and share. 
Also, we have Brother Clinton Mosley uh, Jr. Uh, he is a uh, school uh, professional counselor over at Akakeek Academy in Akakeek, Maryland. You may have remembered him last year around about this time uh, during the Men Make a Difference uh, segment when he came in and to share with us about Men Make a Difference. So, uh, definitely, Mr. Mosley, welcome back. Going? Welcome How's back. Going? Happy right. to be back. Happy Reintroduce to be back. yourself to the people. Hello, I'm Clinton Mosley. I'm the counselor <laughs> at Akakeek Academy, uh, born and raised, a product of Prince George's County in Capitol Heights, Maryland, went to Central High School. And uh, so, uh, you know, I came, uh, I, matter of fact, I'm, I came back to this area about four years ago. I was in Mississippi for about 12 years, 12 mm. years. So I got my uh, a bachelor's degree in communication and broadcasting. Uh, radio is, radio is just my thing. I like it. I love it. Okay. You know, so um, <laughs> um, graduated uh, with a communications degree, got my master's degree, and then I fell into education. You know, it's, it's interesting how, you know, God just kind of shows you just different things that, hey, this is it. This is your calling. And I stuck with it. Uh, I've been a counselor for over six years. Um, and uh, mentoring, coaching football, mentoring young minds, that's mm -hmm. my passion. And uh, he sent me here to serve. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I am very passionate about all the events that I'm a part of and uh, mentoring the young, uh, mm -hmm. the young students, the young scholars at Akakeek Academy to be great and be awesome. You mm -hmm. know, and never and never when you fall down, that means you'll get back up is going to be higher and higher and higher every single day. So I'm just happy and honored Amen. to be here. Amen. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, you definitely see the heart and the passion of these men. So now I want to introduce you to uh, Dr. Bryant. <laughs> no, that's just a joke. I'm, I'm so used to you being here. So that's that's a good thing. OK, so. So, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to. <laughs> Uh, our producer told me to say that. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to just um, <laughs> uh, take a moment, uh, pause for the cause, and um, allow Mr. Mosley to share with you a little bit uh, more and uh, about uh, Men Make a Difference. Yeah, so I, I've been pretty much doing Men Make a Difference. This is my third year doing Men Make a Difference. Uh, last year, we had an awesome lineup. We had Chris Lawrence, anchor from Channel 4 News, and uh, we um, also had our uh, heavyweight, uh, excuse me, middleweight champion um uh, jared swift heard and um, yeah. you know it was an awesome time to honor him that was last year and so this year you know akakeek academy is uh, our slogan is raising the bar the akakeek way so we're doing it again and so we have oh. some phenomenal oh. speakers coming to speak this year um uh, and that's monday october 14th and uh so we have also we have one of our speakers is uh stan long he's an author and a writer and uh he's also an actor um he was uh, posed in um, um two movies and also working on his third recognize and recognize too um he is uh, also launching relaunching uh one of his books and it's called uh uh, the uh, Blackbird uh, medley, and uh, it's the transformation of a gangster. So, you know, I'm definitely interested to hear his story as he as he comes forth to mm -hmm. Akakeek Academy to talk. Also, we have uh, Reverend uh, James L. Black. Um, he's an author of 18 books and resources. He's a, a native of uh, Savannah, Georgia, and uh, I met him um, uh, through a friend of mine, and uh, she told me that he travels around the world to talk to students mm -hmm. about if they're interested in being an author. You know, he will be the one to definitely, you know, review, edit and and ultimately put your book out there if you um, if you, you know, really wanting that to be out there. So, I, you know, I was very, very happy for him to confirm okay. that event. And uh, lastly, mm -hmm. but not least, our keynote speaker is going to be Councilman uh, Sidney Harris for District 9. Uh, he just uh, got elected in November of 2018. And uh, so. He is an awesome, phenomenal speaker. So, you know, it's another awesome event that Akaki Academy is putting on, and we're just All raising right. the bar. All, All right. right. Absolutely. So during that time from uh, the school year and up to this point, have the uh, male father uh, participation, has it uh, increased? Yes, it has. It, yes, it has. Uh, through Well, I would say Akakeek Academy is uh, is is the largest K through eight school in Prince George's County, okay. and so the community, the the men, the fathers, they're it's like it's like they're gravitating towards their students or their mm -hmm. kids to definitely find out what's going on, what are they learning, okay. and uh, so you know the the internet, everything that they're that they're interested in, the fathers are starting to take that take that step to say, listen, I want to be in my child's life twenty four seven non-stop and so they're coming on out and uh being a, a all they're just being they're just doing the awesome things so that's all right mm -hmm. that's all right dr champion yeah. i was just gonna say uh i'm my daughter's over at kakeet and uh i've 
had opportunity to come over to the school and and be involved and uh, it's been a great program we were there with you last year yes. for men make a difference day i plan to be there again with you uh this year and i and i just want to say this to those who are watching and listening that there's a school in your neighborhood. Yes. We're going to highlight a couple of schools today. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about Akakit Academy. We're going to also talk about the, uh, which one is that? It's Charles Carroll, uh, the where the middle school where uh, Brotherhood is going to be. We'll also talk about Maya Angelou, where I first got introduced to mm -hmm. uh, Men Make a Difference Day, where uh, I actually had the opportunity to coordinate it uh, mm -hmm. for a few years, and it's still going on. So we're going to highlight those three, but there's a school in your neighborhood. And so we, we encourage you to come to one of these three schools, but there's also a school in your neighborhood. So what I want you to do is in your tagline of this show, mm -hmm. Shout out the name of the school in your neighborhood that you're going to be at on Monday morning making a difference. Because while there is a program going on, one of the most exciting things for the kids mm -hmm. is when they see they get off the bus. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of men yes. out there clapping yes, yes. for them and yes. high-fiving them yes. and saying, you can do it. And you mm -hmm. start seeing them. They're walking slow. But all of a sudden, they start putting a little pep in their step because they want to yes, yes. be proud yes, of yes, what they're yes, doing. Yes, yes, and yes, I think yeah. there's just some excitement about, like I say, men do make a difference. Yes, sir. And we yes, need we to do. recognize yes, that yes, and, 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 and hold to it and make a mm -hmm. difference in people's lives. And this is just one day that mm -hmm. we can. And you can come and stay for a few hours, or you can come mm -hmm. and stay, especially in some of the elementary schools, they mm -hmm. love for the men to read to the children. They love for mm -hmm. the men to come in to other activities, and you can come in on career day mm -hmm. and, all, and other things mm -hmm. like this. But we just encourage you on this national day to come out, regardless of where you are in the country, there's a school near you. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to uh, attend that school and help in making a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Coach Hood, yes, sir. can you tell us a little bit about what's going on over there, Men Make a Difference program? Well, I'm going to tell you what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I don't have a, a particular affiliation with that particular school, Okay. but one of their coaches, uh, Coach Dunbar, coaches the uh, boys' basketball team. Okay. I believe he coaches both the girls' and boys' soccer team. Okay. He's on the security force. Mm -hmm. He loves kids, Okay. and everything he does is about promoting the kids. And so one day he reached out, and we've never coached together, Mm -hmm. He reached out and said, Coach Hood, I want you to come over to Charles Curl for Men Make a Difference Day. And I said, yes, just automatically, because I don't ever pass up opportunities to get in front of kids. I never do. And awesome. so he has shared with me, they have a large lineup. But I think you saw it on the, on the flyer I sent you. And um, I think WK West is going to be there. Okay. WHER is going to be there. HU. That's you right. Know? So, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just looking forward to it. And uh, like I told someone the other day, I pray for other guys that are there with me because they're going to have them in different sections because if they let me go first, it's going to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you how I feel yeah. Yeah. because yeah. I trust in what God is going to do through me. See, yeah. I used to, yeah. one, once yeah. upon a time, I used to have to write a speech and then read the speech. I don't have to do that anymore. I just trust the Holy Spirit went out my mouth. He's going to speak. And so he's already shown me what to do on Monday. Mm -hmm. So again, yes, sir. I hope you're listening. Yes, sir. Them guys better hope I don't go first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have a high bar yeah, to reach time, That's all right. because I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to get, right, I'm gonna get it right. started. I'm, I'm going to break it off. So That's I'm looking right. forward. I'm excited. Um, I can't wait till 8.30 Monday morning when I have to be there. I just got the email this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I was about to call them. I'm like, look, where's my confirmation? Where's my email? And then it came through. Thank you, God. So I, I'm looking forward. And to you it. do have a book. Yes, sir. And your book. And what's the name of your book? My book is called It's All About Me. Okay. All Motivation about me. and Encouragement. Amen. You know, it's funny. I was told that I was arrogant because I wrote a book. It's all about me because they didn't read the whole title. Yeah. But it's not all about me. It's all about me, motivation and encouragement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is my current yes, book. Sir. I am currently working on another book. I can't give you the title yet. Okay. But I will tell you that it's a journey of my life mm -hmm. of mentoring and coaching. Okay. Awesome. That's, that's my story. That's I'm going to awesome. put my story in print. Okay. See, it's, a, it's a worthy wow. story. And those of you who are biblically inclined will understand that uh, it has seven chapters. Mm -hmm. Seven is for completion. Mm -hmm. Because I'm at a point now where my coaching has ended. Mm -hmm. I do more speaking now. So okay. God is moving me to another level. And I'm happy about that. It was a little tough at first because I'm used to being around my kids. But mm -hmm. 
God is taking me. It's got to be good. Mm -hmm. That's the way so, I look at yeah, it. So amen. I'm working on the next book right now. Okay, it's all about me. Well, obviously, you're part of a writing family. We had your wife in here a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Uh, Tanya Hood, <laughs> who yes. uh, came in to talk about, you know, her book. and. Yes. Uh, and red alert. And red alert. And is, just, red alert. Is he the one? Is, is he the one? Is right. he That's the right. One. Which is our October book of the month. Yes. And uh, awesome. and, and so we, we just kind of acknowledge uh, how, how this powerful, dynamic team of mm. authors have mm. come mm. together. Oh, and uh, mm -hmm. we also want to continue to encourage those who have not already registered that mm -hmm. on October 19th, mm -hmm. a time of healing redeemed from our past which will be led mm. by uh sister tanya hood and also france neptune of edify your sister mm -hmm. which can also be seen on wbgr okay can i say mm. something real quick yes Go sir ahead, brother. we're talking about men make a difference day i just want to acknowledge you two because what mm -hmm. you guys are doing here a platform for men mm -hmm. this definitely. is awesome definitely and i promise you because i'm already doing it i'm spreading the word about you guys because you're like a best kept secret. People need to know. And yes. had my wife haven't been here, and then we haven't been at the studio for another segment. Guys, have to. People need to know. Amen. So yes. I appreciate what you two guys are doing for us. Amen. To to have that platform for me. Yes. So I appreciate yes. you guys. Well, that's but one of those yes. motivating points where God gets the glory because when you know what God has placed in you, and then it has you have the opportunity to take the vision from within and allow it to manifest, Amen. Amen. and uh, others can drink from that. Absolutely. That's the blessing. Yes. That's the blessing. Yes. Yes. And, and no dollar amount could be placed on that. But you have to be willing. That's you right. have to be guys willing. Are willing. That's why I'm giving that and, and we appreciate that. it. And, and as we have said before, we do this show one hour a week. However, what we attempt to do is to touch more people. And touching them and during this broadcast is just the beginning. But if you were to call us out to your programs, to mm -hmm. your events, mm -hmm. uh, my brother's keeper will be there. As like I say, we'll be over to Act the Academy mm -hmm. on this coming Monday. Yes. And I'm waiting for yes. my invitation for next year. Yes. Sir. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. You gonna get that confirmation? Right. Sure. Well, 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 Coach Hood, I don't know. You talking, man? You you saying how you know you setting the bar and how dynamic it's gonna be? You uh, you almost convinced me to make it on down there where you're going. Come on over there. You know, I'm Come like, oh, you there. know, we gotta, spread, we gotta we gotta spread it out sometime. Yeah. That's right. I yeah, because last year I was over at um, what's the Akakik Academy? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yes. uh, with um, the uh, uh, middleweight uh, champ and. Um, the, uh, what's the uh, newscaster? Uh, Chris Lawrence. Yeah, Chris, Chris yes. Lawrence. Yeah, and we were able to uh, n um, talk with them and uh, get some nice pictures and everything. And that's yeah, something else yeah, we want y'all to do. When you take pictures of what's going on at your schools, send them to us so we can show the world like, what uh, Men Make a Difference Day yes, is uh, it doing. Like. Yeah, and, it and like, yeah. I don't know what year this actually started. I believe I've been involved since 2007. Okay. Uh, however, the gentleman, uh, Dr. Michael Robinson, mm -hmm. is local. Local to this community, and he mm. uh, he originally started Men Make a Difference okay. in Prince George's County. In the first year that he did it, mm -hmm. across the county, over ten thousand men came out. Wow! Wow! That's it. That's, That's, it. It. That's, That's it. So so now you imagine That's it. That's it. how many men are coming out yeah. making a difference, mm -hmm. and and that's what you need to know. Yeah. Guys, you can be ten thousand and one. Amen. <laughs> and that's just in Prince George's County. Yes, but we're talking, yes, and I yes, challenge sir. you, I, and I say this to my Omega brothers and to the others, the Kappas, the Sigmas, the Masons, the uh, yeah, Alphas, Masonic, Masonic uh, you on. know, all, all of you, you, you know, yeah. the ministry to men, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, the solo man, whatever you are, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just come on out, you know, Boy Scouts. Amen. Come on out. You know, come, come on out and be engaged in your community. Amen. Because you do make a difference. Amen. Uh, I want to shift this for a minute, and um, I want to ask you first, um, Brother Mosley, um, as we talking, uh, as we are talking about men making a difference, what man has made a difference in your life? Hmm. You know what? You know. Get ready, uh, Coach Hood. Boy, boy, <laughs> you better hit you first. <laughs> you know, um, the one person that I can truly say is my father. You know, my father has um, worked with me because. Again, I, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a different time and uh, I was out just doing everything. But the one thing every single day he kind of instilled in me is said, son, listen, your time is coming and you got to be ready for the opportunity. 
And so each and every day, you know, when I see my father, you know, when I talk to him, you know, he just he, he you know, I represent him. You know, and, you know, for him to name me after him and mm -hmm. for me to continue to just serve the way that um, he would he would like me to serve. And as God would like me to serve, you know, he has been an impact in my life each and every day that I go in and counsel those kids, you know. And uh, so, you know, my father has always been in my life and um, I want to be able to share those things, those tools that my father put in my tool belt and give mm -hmm. them out to those mm -hmm. young minds, mm -hmm. to those young mm -hmm. scholars that, because again, those are our future leaders. Yes. Exactly. So I want to just continue to serve in that manner. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. And, and with um, the tools that you have uh, been given and what you have uh, accomplished, you definitely have been serving. I appreciate Thank that. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for Thank serving. You. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you have had a man make a difference in your life, uh, won't you just... Um, Go to the thread and put something in there and uh, whether it was your father, whether it was a teacher, a pastor that made a difference, that a man made a difference in your life because that testimony may be a, a point of uh, return for someone to look for hope in that place of where you possibly found um, in a pastor or a teacher. All right, gave you enough time, Coach Hood. <laughs> it's not hard. I came from the opposite end. I didn't have a man in my life. Mm -hmm. God placed an uncle here, an uncle there. Godfather community here that I learned uh -oh. bits and pieces from. Yes, Not sir. all at the same time. Yes, sir. But he knew strategically. Mm -hmm. He just kind of laid me around. I got a little BC, a little piece there, and then from a young man, one of my own peers, right, right along with me, who I didn't know had a call on his life. Mm -hmm. You know, we we went junior high school at College E. Woodson, which is now Friendship Edison, and um, his, it, God rest his soul. He, he's deceased now. His name is uh, Reverend Stephen K. Wright. Young man, powerful. Whenever I needed a real word, mm -hmm. I could reach him. Mm. If it was just for a regular conversation, I could never catch up with him. But he and another brother, Willie Jolly, who I'm sure everybody knows, <laughs> Willie Jolly inspires me to this day. Mm -hmm. He was never my official mentor, mm -hmm. but Willie inspires me to mm -hmm. this day. His name is on the top of my book because he told me, Les Brown did it for me, I'll do it for you. I just watched certain people, and Willie and Steve were the ones who kept saying, come to church, brother. Come to church, brother. They never pressed me, mm -hmm. but he's kept gently encouraging me. And I never forget, I never saw the Super Bowl where Doug Williams won. Mm -hmm. I never saw it. I have it on tape, but I've never seen it because I had the flu. Mm -hmm. But Willie told me one Sunday, he said, man, stop letting the devil keep you from coming to church. So that Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, I had the flu. I called Willie. I said, Willie, hey, <laughs> I'm coming to church. He said, what's wrong with you? I'm sick. He said, man, keep that at home. I'll see you, <laughs> I, I see you another Sunday. <laughs> I said, but you told me not the devil stop me. He said, that ain't the double stop. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't come to church. <laughs> so, um, long story short, it was um, February of 1988. I went to church, and God rest his soul, too. John Cherry was the pastor at uh, Full Gospel Amy Zion Church. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the back of the church. I'm like, these two guys, Steve and Willie, are going to have to deal with me because they told this man all my business. Because what he was preaching yeah. about was my life. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Dare they betray me like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so I'm sitting, I'm fuming. And then I'm like, man, whatever. They, they this call to come join the church and give you like, I ain't doing none of that right there. Until that force picked me up out the chair and pulled me down that aisle. It seemed like it was like a mile long. Mm. And I'm trying to I'm trying to resist. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. But I couldn't. Yes, sir. When I got without I say about 10, 15 feet from my brother Steve because he was a he was a pastor. He was assistant to uh, Reverend Cherry, and he started crying. Then I started crying. Mm. I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> but, but that was the beginning. Mm. That's when I gave my life to Christ. And Steve was over top of the youth ministry, so he got me started with what God had placed in me to do youth ministry. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that. You know that'll be in my new book. Um, but every March 18th, I think about Steve. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he's still, yes, he's sir. still with me. Yes, sir. He's I'm still, still motivated still. because yes, of what he did. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'm still motivated by what yes, Willie Jolly does. Yes, you know. So that's where my influence came from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you guys can really get a glimpse or not, but he's not a light fella. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit picking him up. <laughs> A pretty fit guy. <laughs> he got jokes. Yeah, he, got, he, got, he, got jokes he, he, he got all power. So, so did you want to you want to jump in there right quick and say something? Well, you know, and I guess we all probably you know have a story um, about who influenced our life. And, and and thank you for mentioning uh, Willie Jolly, who was our person of interest uh, 
just about a month ago, and uh, who we hope is going to be a, on this show very soon, uh, Dr. Jolly, if you're watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what, I, and, and, I, and I, I'm thankful to my mm -hmm. father, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thankful to my father for not just being a dad and a leader in my life, but also surrounding me in a community mm -hmm. of people who watched me mm -hmm. and nurtured me. So people who reinforced his message. And one of the strongest things I learned through that is how men have to come together mm -hmm. in order to be successful. That when mm -hmm. you try to do things by yourself, mm -hmm. and you, we just can't raise ourselves alone. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. help you know, a, a, a young man by ourselves. We have to come together. And that's why it's not a man makes a difference, it's men make a men, difference. Because a, together, they're, 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 that's when you begin to see the power yes, of, yes. of what men Absolutely. really do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes when, it, when I'm talking to someone, I just sound like clanging cymbals. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, when you hear the harmony mm -hmm. of multiple voices saying mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, you know, the harmony begins to be like conjunction junction what's your function you start remembering it all the time yeah. and, 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 and it just kind of plays its way into your soul you start and, hooking up clauses and phrases that's right and so you still remember that <laughs> now you were probably a little older when that came out you were probably in 10th grade when that came out but when I was in elementary school uh, that was a very popular that was a very popular thing but but I think, shots fired ladies and gentlemen I thank God yes. for my father Amen. who Amen. introduced me to that type of life yes. and 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 and, and, and it's really been one of the motivating things about me about wanting to work with men instead of being out there on an island all by myself. Amen. Amen. Good news there. That's good news. Uh, one um, African proverb that comes to mind is um, a child that is not embraced by the village mm. will burn it down to fill its warmth. Yes. So you're absolutely right. It takes each of us as men to embrace that that son who who has not known his father, that that son who needs a father. Yes. So definitely it takes each of us to come together to form that village mm -hmm. to cover that child, uh, not only the son, but the daughter equally. Yes. As That's well. right. Yes. We need to cover them. And I, no, and I think it's very important. And I think back, you know, I was with Dr. Leo Pinkett. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were in South Carolina in Columbia. His grandson went to school uh, in Columbia. And so he, his grandson came over to, you know, see granddad. And I'm mm -hmm. probably sure that he broke him off a little cash or whatever. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, Leo said, hey, I want you to talk to my grandson. Just spend a little time with him. And, and see, that's strategic, how we have to be. Mm -hmm. When we know that there are people who yes, are going to reinforce yes, our values, yes, sir. we have to put them in those individuals' lives. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and we just, mm -hmm. you know, chatted a little bit and we mm -hmm. talked about his major, we talked about his goals, we talked about his future, we talked about these types of things. Mm -hmm. and, and and I gave him some of my story. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. shared some things with him about that. But it was very intentional how mm -hmm. it did. And so mm -hmm. we have to be very intentional about introducing mm -hmm. our, our young mentees mm -hmm. to other men. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. Absolutely. That's a good point, too. Yeah. You know, something else I noticed, a lot of men are willing Mm -hmm. But they they need an invitation. Mm -hmm. So when you mm -hmm. reach out mm -hmm. and pull them, mm -hmm. they're gonna give you the work. They want they just yeah. need somebody to mm -hmm. pull them in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're willing. We just gotta we gotta reach out more and pull our brothers in. Mm -hmm. And and, and and another thing, as men, when we do come together, it's uh, we have to be intentional. Men are intentional. It's uh, you know you get together, you can't be bojangling right. because men have um, excess. T you know certain amount of time to do certain things so we don't want to be uh, wasteful of our time mm -hmm. so you want to just sit back and just talk about a bunch of nothing and we're intentional about getting uh, things done getting the job done we have to be intentional about the success of uh, the program of uh, building young men into men yes yeah, I, t I totally Absolutely. agree I really I really truly feel that you know us as men you know sometimes we can be a little silent if you see something if you see a young man if you see you know a young lady doing something that they're not supposed to do speak up mm -hmm. give out one of those tools you know live unselfishly you know continue mm -hmm. to just share it you know because you never know what that message may mean to that person when they're caught in a situation yes. and they're sitting there thinking like you know he told me that he he, he mm -hmm. let me know and you know I, you know I'm hoping that you know just like coach you know um, when I you know when I was a coach in Mississippi I always used to tell my students that hey listen you may be listening to me or you may not stuff may come through out through one end right at the other but I want you to just remember me. Remember that somebody tried to steer you in the right direction and teach yes. you something. Yes. And then hopefully, you know, as you get older, 
you say, you know what? I remember this man that told me this, and you mm-hmm. know what? I'm gonna start doing this right. I'm gonna start passing this along. Mm-hmm. So you know, us as men, we just mm-hmm. need to start taking that initiative. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And paying it forward, mm-hmm. yeah. Dr. Champ. I'm, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, that was a good exchange back to. <laughs> now back to you, Mike. <laughs> um, that is a, a good place even to uh, segue, I believe. Um, over the course of um, the week, uh, we ha- we've had a um, situation down in Dallas, Texas, mm-hmm. and where we have the young man, um, brother of um, uh, brother Botham, uh, Jean Botham, Botham Jean. I'm sorry, thank you, uh, Miss Producer. Um, but he embraced the um, killer of his brother. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to come from the space of men and how men make a difference. What yes. was your takeaway from that moment? You know, um, it's interesting, you know, because when you look at it, you know, people are going to say, you know, some negative things. Some people mm-hmm. are going to feel positive about it. But, you know, you cannot describe or well, you cannot feel somebody else's emotion. <clears throat> that was his emotion on the stand at that time. And the thing about it is that he is the younger brother of, you know, of some of his his brother being slayed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, he did exactly what his brother would do. His brother was his mentor. Mm-hmm. He looked up to his brother. Mm-hmm. And so he could not, you know, if he if he knew it and his if he knew in his heart, he knew his brother's heart mm-hmm. and he knew that his emotion and his compassion for someone else doing some harm his brother would have done the same thing. And, you know, you can't feel somebody else's emotion because that's their own feeling. Mm. And for him to decide to want to hug her and forgive her for what she did, I truly feel that his brother was talking to him, was telling him about, hey, you know, I'm okay. You know, the family accepted it. Uh And he went up on that stand and he spoke from here. Uh He spoke from inside. And that's the emotion that he was feeling at the time. So, you know, I truly feel that, uh, you know, some people are not going to like it. Some people are not going to like, you know, some people may not like what I say. But the thing about it is, you Mm -hmm. know, I'm speaking from, you know, um, a a person that has learned to forgive, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, no matter how hard it may be, you know, for him and his family to take that time to forgive, that was his emotion coming Mm -hmm. out on the stand. And it came out in words. So, Wow. Brother Hood? Well, from being a person who's been forgiven myself, I had to learn that we have to forgive, not for the other person's sake, but for our own. Mm -hmm. You know, it it does me good. So that young man knew from his upbringing that if he didn't forgive her, he was going to be harboring those feelings that he normally first probably felt. Anger and all those things, but mm. he knew from his training he yes, couldn't sir. let that come out. Yes, sir. And God yes, says, sir. "Forgive." If you want me to forgive you, you got to show that. So, mm-hmm. I was I applauded what he did because mm-hmm. it's about God at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It ain't about man and what man thinks about you. Mm-hmm. It's at the end of the day. I want God to say, "Well done, Eric." So mm-hmm. I was happy to see him to show to right show that. there in that space. That young man was holding such emotions since his brother was taken from him. A whole year before he could get to the point of uh, hearing that verdict. So an array of emotions must have been going everywhere. But he he settled down right there in that space and he stood flat foot. And I believe that it wasn't rehearsed because I watched him. I watched that tape several times. Mm -hmm. It was as if he was being spoken to at the very moment. Mm -hmm. He heard and then he responded because mm-hmm. you could see him like stuck a couple of times and and then yeah. he got the words out. Yeah. So that mm-hmm. wasn't orchestrated. I don't care who else feels whatever. That's mm-hmm. my belief mm-hmm. that that young man was being ministered to right then and there, and he let God be shown in that particular moment, and God got the glory for that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So to the people, uh, the many people who talk about, uh, well, black people always forgive, always forgive. What do you what do you say to them? Well. My God is no respect of color. He has no respect for color. It's people. We're all mm-hmm. his people. Mm-hmm. And we all are supposed to be going by the same rules. Mm-hmm. He didn't say in his Bible, yellow people do this, black mm-hmm. people do this. He said, do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're all held accountable to the same standards. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't I don't 
get into that that color. They know we're people. We're all mm-hmm. God's people. Period. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you Absolutely. Know, I, I, you know, I, when, when you talk about forgiveness, you know, it all takes time. You know, some mm-hmm. people can forgive a lot. You know, faster than others. You know, and it all takes time. It takes time for you to be able to say, "I forgive you." Mm-hmm. And you know, there is on forgiveness. There is no length of time. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to say within yourself, "Hey, I'm ready to forgive. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to forgive this person <laughs> for the wrongdoing mm-hmm. that they have done to you." You know, and and the thing about it is, everything's a process. It yes. takes time. In order for you to get that job, it takes time mm-hmm. for you to get it. You got to go through the ramifications. In order for that, you got to cry. You got to be able to talk mm-hmm. to yourself in that mirror and say, "You know what?" I think it's time for me to give, for, mm-hmm. forgive, you know, those people that have done anything wrong to you. And, you know, it happened almost over a year ago, and he had time to forgive, and he voiced it. So, yes. yeah. I think it was um, he came right toe-to-toe with that moment in time that, would, that was going to come. But it was a time, I believe, that it has a lot to do with what he added to his faith. And as he matured, I believe that it had a lot to do with abiding. And as he abided, as he remained in Christ, as he remained, uh, the branch remains a part of the, the vine. It's a constant feeding. And unless a person is a, abiding in relationship, remaining in Christ, I don't believe that that person could uh, just all of a sudden receive that forgiveness to speak to that space right there i believe that when when the bible is crystal when it says um if you abide in me and my word abide in you it's the word that begin to allow you to walk it out uh what you're receiving from the word not so much my opinion what i think but Mm -hmm. by faith so now we understand that just shall live by faith so he spoke into his destiny because even in that space, when he even asked to hug his killer, his, his brother's killer, that went beyond the human mind comprehension. Because any, any other place in time, what would happen is uh, th- they'll be across the, the, the tables and, and it'll be disarray all in, within the courtroom. But I believe in that moment in time, uh, not only will America, that this, this moment showed uh, the love of God, but I think it also showed America to now take a look at herself. Mm-hmm. You notice in that if you paid attention, as he approached her, the bailiff stepped towards him. Yes. Because he wasn't so sure what the young man was Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Champ. Yeah, one thing I just want to say, and, I, and going back to how you phrased the questions uh, about men. I think one that we saw a man lead by example, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we saw a character that mm-hmm. we can model ourselves after. Absolutely. But we, what we also saw is that you know this is not a black and white thing. Mm-hmm. This is a God thing. Mm-hmm. And what happens when we turn things over to God? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. You're, you're right. You cannot imagine having that type of response. But only God mm-hmm. can give you that. Mm-hmm. And He gave mm-hmm. God the credit mm-hmm. for that. He didn't just say, "I forgive you." Mm-hmm. He says, you know, yeah. I hope oh, that crystal. you will find mm-hmm. Jesus Christ in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and what I, what having today's technology and being able to watch the video meant so much. Because if you just hear on the news that he hugged her, mm-hmm. you're going to draw mm-hmm. one emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, to sit there and watch him as he spoke to her, mm-hmm. not only was he in his emotion, mm-hmm. but I was in my own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I had a feeling about myself yes. in that moment that I felt kind of warm at what mm-hmm. he was willing to do. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and God does that. And see, now this guy has set an example of how men yes. should respond. Yes. yes. And in a time and day, you said the guard was checking them. Because mm-hmm. in a time like this, they expect a yeah. black <laughs> man to react in violence. Yes. They expect mm-hmm. a black man to, to, to go off, mm-hmm. exactly. to be threatening. Mm-hmm. But what he showed, mm-hmm. He allowed God Mm -hmm. to be in control. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And while allowing God to be in control, he showed us Mm -hmm. how God can move. Absolutely. Amen. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said amen. 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 It's it's, it's something. You know, (laughs) know, and and, and throughout throughout my time of of seeing, you know, um, you know, and hearing and watching the news, you know, you know, one of my models that I truly live by is time waits for nothing, but everything takes its time. 
and with anybody's process with any with anybody that's grieving you know the time the prayer the silent mm-hmm. moments mm-hmm. to go you know men us men we we, we can't kind of go back in our caves to be like hey you know let me think this out you know it, was this right or was this wrong or how is this happening so we can come up with you know after we leave that cave you know we, we have that time that we need mm-hmm. you know to be able to express you know our you know, and articulate how we feel and uh at that time he had the time to express his emotion within mm-hmm. himself and trust and believe me his brother was in the courtroom that day his brother was in the courtroom that day and i guarantee you he smiled at him mm-hmm. i promise you he did so yeah Amen. yeah i do believe that again it's about um you know taking uh responsibility in that moment as a man and again america still has to now look at herself uh because america has to reconcile yes yeah. And I, I believe that's how powerful this God moment was. So again, everyone has to take an opportunity and hold their feet to the to the fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, no one is absolved of of anything, pretty much. So um, don't want to flip the script on it. But uh, yeah, I I was uh, blessed uh, by the uh, moment. Just a comment from Wanda Briscoe. First, let's give her a shout out because she posted she's an eight year breast cancer. Survivor. Sister Wanda right. Briscoe. Right. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But she posted, forgiveness has to be given out of love, mm-hmm. whether it is asked for, earned, or expected. We have Amen. to give it from That's the heart. Right. From the heart. Amen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And that's where uh, John 15, 5 uh, talks about if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you can't help but allow the love of God to saturate your heart. And as you draw nigh to him, his word begin to speak to your spirit and change. And as you go forth in him. So definitely it's about relationship. And we did see that it, it was something more than himself that he allowed um uh, himself to uh to move in that moment you know and obedience and um as a result he received the fruit we have another comment no okay any any last minute comments on your brothers i'm just thankful that i had the opportunity to be here with you guys today i met a, yeah, another yes. fine brother yes yes and then see, see, yeah. see, see what your show has done you've linked two more men that's right. Yes, Amen. Sir. And that's what yes, you guys sir. are about, Amen. you know. And so I'm looking forward to collaborating with him coming down to Acre Geek yes. and seeing who I can help bless him, help Amen. him bless down there. Yes. Amen. And, yes, uh, and God will get the glory for all that. I Amen. continue to pray for you, brothers, and what, you, what you're doing here. Amen. Um, yes. Amen. So looking forward to Monday because I can't wait. Amen. You know, the week is not going fast <laughs> enough for me, <laughs> man. I, I, I really do, you know, when, 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 and I pray every man, every person finds what they call is in life because that's what wakes me up in the morning, yeah. gets me yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I just mm-hmm. love what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know. I used to always hear people say, "If you can find that one thing that you could do that you don't get paid for, I found mine." <laughs> now, I ain't mad if, if the God showered me with some some finances, but oh, yes, sir. Yeah. yes, sir, I do yes, it sir. Every day. yes, sir, yes, sir. I do it every day, and, yes, and, I, and I love. It. I look for the opportunities, and I'm just thankful, man. That's right. what's up. Yeah, That's yeah, what's up. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, brother. So, what you, you know, got? You what know, you I'm, got, brother? I'm, you know, just, just <laughs> piggyback off him. I'm truly thankful to be here. This, you know, this is my every time I come. You know, when I pull up at that problem, I just start smiling. Cause you know this is home for me. I you know I, I truly enjoy it. You know, and then you know for for us to talk about men make a difference. You know, and um, which all of us has have had so much so much uh, ups and downs. You know, we have failed. You know, we've got back up, dust ourselves off. We fell again mm-hmm. and dust ourselves off, and we just continue to just be better fathers, but better excuse me, better fathers. You know, uh, better husbands, and uh, as well as you know, and just continue to share that stuff. You know, to our community. So you know, I just you know, I'm honored to be here. You know, meet another meet another uh, a brother here that you know I can share stuff off, and and then again just continue to collaborate with each with one another. So I'm blessed. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Definitely. Well, again, we're, we're thankful to both of you for spending time with mm-hmm. us, uh, and we're, we're hopeful that uh, individuals who have seen the show will show out on Monday uh, to be out in number. So let me just say this about Men Make a Difference Day, again, national program. And if you want to learn more about Men Make a Difference uh, Day, uh, you can go to www.menmakeadifferenceday, all one word, <laughs> menmakeadifferenceday.org. W-E-E-B-L-Y, I guess that's Weebly, dot com. And you'll find more information where you'll find there is promotional 
uh, material as well as organizing material. So if you do not have a Men Make a Difference Day in your community, you can begin to, uh, that's that's your challenge, to mm -hmm. be the one to uh, to start it. And one last thing I do want to mention, uh, yes, and, and um, WBGR has uh, moved its uh, main site to yes. wbgrnetwork.com. Mm -hmm. So those of you who have locked in the former, uh, I think it was uh, wbgronline.com, mm -hmm. please mm -hmm. redirect uh, your links to this mm -hmm. new site mm -hmm. of wbgrnetwork.com. You're going to see more information, flyers, which have been behind you about Men Make a Difference Day at some of the different schools, and we're still encouraging those of you who are watching, who are doing Men Make a Difference Day, send us information about your programs and we will get that information out and also feel free to post on uh, my brother's keepers uh, page so we can uh, make a collage and continue to share it forth as well hey guys remember when good men stand together we become greater we are our brother's keeper and see you on the other side of greatness God bless you and thank you My for tuning in. Show. I gotta Tonight's let them know. Tuesday, Amen. 7 p.m., gotta let them know. Three M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show, I gotta let them know. Tuesday, 7 p.m., gotta let them know. Three M's meant to model, gotta multiply. God gets all the glory, hands in the sky. My brothers keep a show. Oh, oh, oh. Introduce the host. Oh, oh, oh. My brothers keep a show. Oh, oh, oh. Introduce the host, Pastor Dr. Michael Green.